I hope you had a nice lunch. Someone tweeted even the biryani was really good. I hope uh, you guys don't sleep after having that biryani. Anyways. So let's uh, start with Techlash. Uh, Techlash, uh, as we have already uh, uh, seen in the introduction uh, session that uh, it's a technology uh, rapid fire round. So we have a lot of speakers here. Uh, who will uh, talk about the challenges they, st they faced and the technology they used to solve it. Uh, first we have Vinay, Vinay Sinha. Uh, he's talking about your TV reimagined. Good afternoon, guys. I think the afternoon sessions are toughest to be a awake. I hope the biryani doesn't come in the way now. Uh, one of the fundamental things that we have as a problem is the bundle of channels that we have, the packages that we have are N plus one, but they don't cater to our needs. We like X, but we get Y of the remote does not have a qualitative search mechanism to go to the program that we need. That's a common problem for us. So how do we solve it? We have a simple dongle and a mobile app. The, every set-top box or every TV becomes intelligent because when you start operating your set-top box from your mobile app, um, you can directly connect to your preferences. So you can do a voice search. You can do a voice search by an actor. You can do a voice search by channel number. You can do a voice search by a channel name, and you can get there. Uh, the other thing that you what's possible here is, suppose your friend is in Delhi, and you're here, and there's a nice Big Bang Theory program that you want to recommend. You could just send a message to them, and they could be having Tata Sky while you have Airtel. And if they accept your recommendation, they can also end up watching the same Big Bang Theory in Delhi. The other thing it does is it goes back and based on your likes and preferences, it allows you to pick the right channels for you that you can pay for or start utilizing in a better way. So one of the things that we have as a common addiction is kids spending too much time in front of television. You have the typical chota beam kind of loose that we have. So how does a parent get an alert then? So that's something that we have figured out. Oh, this is a, not a great feature, but you will always get your, uh, when is your next Manchester United football camp? How does it sync to your Google Calendar so you can get off that time away from your uh, office and manage your traffic and go and watch that? Yeah. Uh, this is something that we want to solve as well. So if the programs that you want on television is not there, then what? So we know what your likes are. Know what your likes are. You don't need to necessarily search your phones. So then we start going back and curating the TV guide to programs that are meaningful for you, that you can have a better engagement with television. And then most of the content of your mobile phone, your voice, your music, your pictures, your video, which are personal to you, that's typically shared by your friends. If you could seamlessly transfer that to TV, that's something that we have worked on as well and you're able to do that now. Uh, this is a snapshot of what you get when you watch from your mobile phone or from your TV remote. We can kind of figure out what you liked and what you did not like. And then we can start tracking it and coming back and telling you know what's the best recommendation for you. Yeah. Next. Yeah. So that's as simple as that. So we are hiring. We need embedded engineers. We need hardware engineers. And we need some interaction designers. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Vinay. Uh, if uh, any one of you have any questions for Vinay, you can ask him. Yeah. Yeah, it is ready. It can work with any set-top box, any service provider, cable or satellite.
have some sort of a hardware which connects to the set of boxes or it, it's yeah. your service connects to their service and <coughs> no, it just happens? No, uh, we have tried to try keep it as independent as possible because they don't allow you to touch a OEM box. Right. The middleware might be restricted. So what we have tried to do is we have tried to keep it independent that it can control the set of box separately. That's one way we have done it. In case they allow you to um, integrate with the middleware, then we can integrate it without the dongle. So we have both options. So because in the first option, you will be having some sort of IR transmitter and it will be controlling yeah. the... Yeah. Okay. IR or Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, whichever. Okay. Uh, currently, we are looking at about 600 Vero. It's more than a price that we want to just give these devices to a set of people first, and then we figure out the way. Huh? Yeah. Please sign up on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can come over and sign up on the page, and we'll definitely look forward to giving you the devices for this. Yeah. Yeah. Please sign up on the page, and you should be able to get your product soon. Correct. Uh, we have uh, talked to existing cable guys uh, in within Bangalore and uh, tier two towns like Tumkur, Mysore, other areas. We have also talked to satellite um, broadcasters as well. We are in discussions with them, so we should see what happens on that. That'll be the easiest go-to market if you were to look at it from the channel perspective. Any more questions for Vinay, or should we let him go? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vinay. You already have a lot of beta testers. Okay. Uh, so next we have a presentation by Amit. Smartphone numbers are always magical. And uh, I do not have any product to showcase today. Only thing is that uh, just briefly about the Days Info. Days Info is primarily a research and analysis firm, and we are among top uh, leading firms who are actively tracking the IT industry. So uh, generally, we have lots of reports, studies, data points, infographics, and insights, which has been authenticated by New York Times, USA Today, Forbes. You can just name it, and you can find it as over there. So this time, we have launched a study. We are doing a study on a smartphone user's behavior in India. And uh, today, I'm here to request all of you to please participate. This will help us to gain more authentic data. Uh, I believe all of you have got a mobile devices, and I believe SAP has been kind enough to give you internet access also. So please visit research.daysinfo.com. It's not going to take more than three minutes. There are 25 questions. I request all of you to just fill it. Your response really values to us. And uh, I also want to mention that uh, we are closing this uh, risk survey on 15th of next month, post to which there will be a 25 respondents who would be getting uh, 500 rupees worth of uh, gift voucher, each of one of them. So please participate and please fill it. Thank you. Thank you. OK, uh, next in Tech Clash, we have a very interesting session. Okay. We have Ninad, who will be taking this session from Germany. And uh, his session is socket.io, meetimpress.js. So he's on phone with us. I'll just connect him online and he'll introduce the session and he'll take over. So the session has some interesting aspects uh, of experience. In my presentation, I, if you have a laptop, go ahead and open it. This is as good an example of my demo that I can give you. Okay, so I'll give you a few seconds before the, while the whole thing opens up. So, what I have to present today for you is something known as demo. Uh, it's a demo that I cooked up because um, some of you have seen the session description. It goes like, I love talking. 
I love walking. I love to walk while I talk. But I can't do it when I'm right, uh, making my presentation. So let's see how I'm doing it. Okay. So I did a small, completely unscientific survey and connected a few useless statistics about uh, Bar Camp 13. As you can see there, every presentation, um, I connected statistics from about six presentations. Each presentation had about 33 slides. Now that's a lot of slides. And if you assume that you walk for about four That's a lot of wasted effort and energy, right? So, what is the standard solution for such a use case? I would use a Bluetooth remote, right? Logitech has some pretty cool stuff. You can pay about a thousand bucks, you will get a USB stick uh, and a nice remote control. But the problem is, it works only for Microsoft PowerPoint. And I hate PowerPoint. So, there were also a few amazing applications for Android and iPhone, but the problem is all of them require that I install um, software on the laptop. So when I'm a nerd, I love JavaScript, so I try to work on it with uh, JavaScript. And I now have uh, something known as this. So I've taken impress.js for showing the presentation. Um, Node.js is what is actually hosting all of this right now. Um, Socket.io is actually doing the ping pong. If you guys have noticed, um, the slides are actually changing automatically on your screen. I am sitting here in Germany, I am clicking a button, Socket.io is playing ping pong with the message and the screen is changing right on your screen. And then there is a secret part, the blah 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 assistant. People who have attended uh, Barcam for 12 would remember blah 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 a lot. So, yeah. Is the secret sauce that detects whether it's imprint.js or whether it's uh, a few other JavaScript frameworks and does its magic. So I do have a few plans. Um, right now, uh, this is a host your own thing on .js, one presentation at a time. I want to support multiple presentations. Um, right now, only imprint.js is supported and another W3C slidey framework. There are at least 10 frameworks out there, so I'm going to try to support all of them. And um, as of now, this is just a simple next, previous, next, previous. If someone joins the presentation late, there is no way he or she can jump to the current slide. And last, if possible, I am going to try to productize if I can, but then that's just a uh, idea. I have to thank a few people for all of this. There is this amazing application called Dona View. I, I suggest you guys go and check it out. It is how presentations should be done in the future with conferences. And then there is Node.js and Socket.io, obviously. Then I have all of this development online. Not a single bit of it has been done on my laptop. So that was all possible because of Nitrous.io. And obviously, uh, Parcamp for giving me this idea and this platform. So, if you have any feedback, you have my Twitter handle, please go ahead and ping me. And if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Thanks. All right, that was Ninar. I'll just uh, take him offline. So, I think this is a very cool hack. You can control your presentations from anywhere. That's awesome. So, Ninal, I think people might be contacting you over uh, uh, Twitter or some places. By the way, he has been online since morning and he has been helping out with a lot of things today. So, yeah, fun big round for Ninal. Of the planners, uh, currently he's not here right now, but uh, he somehow managed to give the presentation. On. Moving on, uh, we have Parul. Uh, she is presenting slide rule, learn to grow. Yeah. Uh, hello everyone, I am Parul Gupta, the co-founder of slide rule. Uh, what we do is we help build your learning path towards your career growth. Um, uh, there's a movement that's been happening over the past uh, couple of years and the 
Okay, this is completely messed up. But okay, so uh, last couple of years, uh, many, many great uh, courses have come online. And I'm sure some of you might have heard about Coursera, edX, Udacity. And you know, er education, premier education, which used to be a privilege of the few, is now becoming accessible to everybody. You know, there's uh, Coursera, edX, Udacity, OpenCourseWare, Treehouse, Code Academy. There's tons of these great online courses. And they've, uh, they've received a lot of traction also. So just as a cool statistic, uh, Coursera got 4 million, its first 4 million users in the 15 months of launch, which is uh, faster than Facebook for the record. Yet, there are lots of courses, uh, there are lots of courses out there which people don't know about. These are just, you know, all the people who have sort of controlled, you know, hogged the, the press are only 2% of all the amount of courses out there. There's a lot of great content which people, you know, know about in niches or lots of people who could use it don't know about. We actually ran a survey of people uh, about the learning, online learning habits and what their pains were, how they use these courses. And uh, one of the main challenges that people pointed out was that uh, they find it really difficult to find the courses relevant for their needs. Uh, and this was, you know, a bigger pain over, you know, lack of uh, groups to study with or lack of good courses in their area of interest or lack of even tutoring for that matter. So, um, the, our, our belief is that every person is unique, their backgrounds are unique, their capabilities are unique, their aspirations are unique. So, the learning needs are also uh, unique. So uh, just a few scenarios, a student uh, might be looking to get some skills which help her find a job. There might be a professional uh, who's already in a job but wants to upscale and you know, um, become more productive or learn about new technologies which help him in his current job. Or there could be a stay-at-home mom who you know, just wants to come back to the workforce and you know, upscale, you know, brush up on the latest technologies for the new job. And for each of these people, the kind of you know, course or the learning material that serves their need is very different. You know, the student might be looking for a beginner level course if he or she does not have any uh, programming experience. The professional might you know, already be at an advanced level and you know, just able to pick up uh, things very fast. And um, you know, uh, the mom might be looking for an intermediate level course just a refresher to you know, get back in the groove. So uh, that's, that's the kind of problem we are uh, looking to solve. And I'll give you a live demo of the, pro uh, the product that we launched only two days ago. Um, we call called uh, Slide Rule. The URL is myslidrule.com. You can, uh, if you go there, you can uh, browse the most popular courses on the web across providers. Uh, say you want to learn Java, or you know, just as an example. The net is quite slow. So it will show you all the courses across different providers, and they'll have different flavors. They'll be beginner level, advanced level. They'll be more theoretical or algorithms oriented. There'll be courses from university providers. You can use all the, you, you can use various filters to narrow down your search. You can see the teaching methods or whether it provides a certificate or not, whether it has interaction uh, available with the instructor. You can choose. You know, amongst the short list of courses, you could choo choose a few, and then you could even compare. So this is pretty much like a comparison shopping site that you have for electronics or e-commerce in general. And say, you know, you, you like something, you know, which is self-paced. You don't want something time-bound. So you can just go to that course. You can read reviews about that course there. And OK, so it looks like, you know, uh, the user has liked the course and, uh, you know, uh, so might be a good try. You can go to the course page or if you've taken the course, you could review it yourself. And then, um, you know, we also have a contest going on where if you've taken any online courses, you could write reviews for them and the top reviewers get up to, hundred, uh, you know, hundred dollars of gift cards. You can log in with Facebook and you could see what courses your friends are taking because for all of us, it's very important, you know, we often make decisions based on what our friends are doing. So we could, uh, okay, I'll, I'll probably skip this for now. But yeah, you would be able to see the learning activity of, free, uh, of your friends and you would also be able to main, maintain your online learning history. Um, so 
So yeah, uh, that's slide rule. Going back to just you know a little bit about the company, the course discovery part is just the first part of the problem. We uh, we have a big vision where we want to provide more and more components of the learning ecosystem. Okay, this is really slow. So just you know, a quick uh, two-liner about our vision. Education is far more than content. It's just not about textbooks or online courses. Um, just a cool statistic that uh, the textbook market is $6 billion in the US, but the, you, the education delivery market is $300 billion. So eventually what we want to do in the long term is provide more and more components besides the courses that a university provide, part of the community, part of the credentialing and certification and also you know connection with placements so um, you know we have a four four step uh, roadmap to get there discovery is the first part then we'll uh, build learning parts and credentialing and employment and then if you're interested in this space i'd be very happy to talk more to uh, you about it whether it's you know what are the technologies we are using to build this you if you know if you have a specific learning need and you want to you know know what are the resources available at your disposal or if you have any feedback about a product, please uh, do reach out to me. That's my email. And also, I'm available around if you want to chat up later. Thank you. Any questions? So uh, we have a couple of uh, revenue models aligned. So at the very first cut, when you know the, uh, the discovery platform that we've launched, it has affiliate commissions uh, with the course providers as the first model, and it's, it started from day one. But further, you know, like I said, that you know, we want to provide more pieces of the education industry, not just the course discovery. So uh, part of it will be the connection with, you know, so you take, you take, take a couple of courses, you have a certain link history. So you're looking for the skills you already have. That will be part of the revenue model. And uh, the certification. Thought. But in our early conversations with users, we found out that that's a big pain. So it could be an additional um, source of revenue as well. So are you just an aggregator, or uh, you are building some kind of logic where uh, uh, you can that what is the best course for me? Like uh, so the we, example so you, are, you have shown, sorry. like uh, I just want to learn Python. So which course is best for me? How do you know that? Right. So actually, in the first cut, and this is just the V0 of the product which we launched two days ago. So this is just the aggregator. It is aggregating courses from multiple providers. And how it helps you find the courses is, you know, uh, you, you can see the various attributes of a course, whether it's a, you know, what's the difficulty level of the course, whether it's a university course or a practitioner course, and, uh, you know, the ratings, user ratings. You can, con uh, and what, what is, whether it provides a certificate or not, whether it's using video lectures or, you know, programming exercises, in-browser programming exercises to do. But th that's the first cut. So eventually, we do want to build an intelligence based on a user's background. So I gave those examples about, you know, a student, a professional, and all of that, right? So, the, you know, a simple no-brainer could be you connect with LinkedIn, and you know uh, their professional background, the skills that their friends have endorsed them for. And then on you sort of build on top of that. So if you've already worked on a project in Django, you know Python. So maybe you're looking for something more advanced. So, so we want to build that intelligence in, in our subsequent so, versions. Um, uh, do you still consider LinkedIn recommendation as very credible source of uh, finding out who, what capabilities do I have? Because uh, frankly, no, so what We have everything. So uh, you know, we uh, right now we have a list of uh, 15 providers, but we are adding more by the day. So even if you know Coursera, et cetera, they have lots of management and hum humanities courses, but there are again university courses. There are other providers like uh, Udemy or uh, you know Linda has some. So they have. I mean, their market. Uh, I mean, Udemy is a marketplace where actually Mark Zuckerberg has a course on product management at Facebook. So there are all sorts of courses available, and we want to add more as we go along.
Thank you. Thank you, Varul. Uh, next, we have a very, very interesting uh, session. It's called How, I, How to Build My Own Wearable Computer by Vinay. This guy actually looks different, you know, if you look at him. I don't know which planet he is from. Hi. So, uh, basically I don't have a presentation to give. So all I'm here to talk about is how I actually went about making this whole thing that I'm wearing on my face. So, I have been following wearable computers uh, for almost a decade now. Uh, and things were upwards of $10,000 even if you wanted to start. Then uh, uh, this Google Glass happened and everybody st wanted to make one. So what I found out was I got this device from a company that went bankrupt. So they were selling it for pretty cheap. <laughs> so interestingly, the company that went bankrupt, the CTO of that company was hired by Google to start Google Glass. So that is the story. So. Um, I got this display for $100 on eBay and the rest of the stuff, I bought a Raspberry Pi, I bought a 10,000 mAh battery pack and off-the-shelf Logitech webcam. The circuit you see in the front is that webcam. I just broke the whole thing open and stuck it on the display. So what I have now is a wearable computer and sadly I wanted to get a VNC connection on so that you could see what's there on the screen but somehow some problem with the VNC connection and this guy is acting up from the morning for Wi-Fi. So I, it's just a three weeks old project that I've started. So I just started uh, sometime in mid of August. And uh, what I have now is a working prototype of the whole thing. What you actually get to see is that my one eye is looking at you and uh, the display is on the other eye. My brain, what it's doing is it's overlapping both of them. And while I can see your faces, I can also see my bash prompt on your faces. So <laughs> that's how it looks like. Uh, in terms of what I want to do with this, I want to run some speech recognition and image processing on this. So that tomorrow, let's say I'm in a conference like this. And uh, typically, I don't remember everybody's faces and names in the conference. So I can have this to just look at you and it'll look into the internal database and say, you met this guy in these conferences and you have spoken about these topics with him. So even before you realize, I can go ask you, hey, you were talking about this topic in last conference, what happened to it? I can do that. So this is the interest for me. Uh, there are innumerable projects that I can run on these. I'm yet to see what to do with that. So this is the current state of the system. Thanks. I'm sure, Vinay, you will have a lot of questions. <laughs> Currently, it can uh, stream the video, but uh, the code for the recording is not yet there. It shouldn't be a problem. But a day or two's job should do the thing. Currently, the application that I'm running for recording, it actually slows the whole things down. It's like three frames per second recording, which is as good as a slideshow. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> do you really think government guys will let this in, in the first place? Sorry? Especially, I don't know, especially nowadays when every media company wants to do an expose, I don't think anybody will allow it in. But yeah, it's an interesting use case, definitely. As a matter of fact, you can give this to a doctor in a hospital and uh, as soon as he looks at you, he knows your whole history. So he doesn't have to sift through files. Yeah. Firstly, uh, awesome concept and uh, good that you are able to uh, put a demo of it. Uh, what I would ask is how much of the device are we not seeing right now? I mean, we are able to see what you're wearing, but yeah. where's the rest of the processing and all? Yeah, like? so, sorry, I missed saying that. Uh, this pocket has a Raspberry Pi, and there is a 10,000 mAh battery pack in this pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so the jacket is part of the entire show. Actually, there's cables running inside the jacket. Yeah, exactly. That's what my mom asked in the morning. What if they think you're carrying a bomb? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, then there's the display controller here that came with the display. So, then I have a wireless keyboard here. That's it. <laughs> so, all of them are off-the-shelf components, except for the display. Everything was sourced from Bangalore. All Chroma, Reliance, digital kind of places. 
So it's pretty doable except for the head mounted display. Uh, I yeah. Uh, do we need internet at all? Sorry? Do we need internet at all for that? Uh, currently I need it because I try coding and downloading application stuff. But in general, depends on your application. If things can run on the board, then fine. So yeah, you were saying that this uh, uh, device runs when there is good internet connection if you go to some village or? Uh, no, no. Uh, what I was saying is if I could get internet on this, yes, I could have done a VNC connection and shown what I am seeing. So uh, uh, just the desktop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, uh, probably I'll do that. Oh, in, uh, in, uh, in the Raspberry, you can, right? So, and no wonder it was hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, somebody else sold uh, another piece just a week after that for one fifty, and they had everything in it. Wow. So, uh, the thing is, um, this can connect to an iPhone. So, if that was the case, it would have been much easier. Any other questions? People are afraid of asking questions to you now. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, so if you are not able to get this one, there's another company called Woozix, but uh, their device is slightly costly, uh, costly around $400. They sell it as a device where you can watch movies on your airplane. That is their pitch. So it also comes with a VGA connector and an RCA connector. So you can use either of them and instead of Raspberry Pi, you can probably try Panda board or Beagle board or any of those. Yeah. Sorry? Um, for the past three weeks, no. <laughs> but uh, honestly, I don't know. Uh, the guys whom I've seen wearing this for more than a decade, they haven't yet complained about it. Uh, the guy who founded this whole wearable computer concept, he wears a display that has a laser source in it. This is still a normal LCD display. He uses an advanced optics and that apparently costs him half a million dollars. But uh, yeah, he's been doing it from the early 80s. When Steve Jobs was busy with Apple One, this guy was building TVs that he could mount on his helmet. So he hasn't had problems, so hopefully I won't. But uh, if I have, you will see my face different next time. <laughs> Sorry. What was that uh, bankrupt company from where you bought it? Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I didn't buy the company. I just bought the device. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the company is called uh, MyView, MYVU. Um, it was actually called Micro Optical, and uh, they were selling it to US military. And then they started off a consumer brand called MyView. And that went bankrupt during the recession. Or at least that's what their Wikipedia page says. So apparently this guy sold his patent to Motorola Mobility, which got bought by Google. And then Google called this guy and said, I, we want you to do something like this. And he created the Google Glass. Thank you. Uh, how is this different from Pranav Mystery's uh, Sixth Sense? So uh, six sense again, uh, the way you do things, the interfacing is different. When you say head mounted display, what it's doing is uh, doing, giving me the actual augmented reality in its pure form. Um, if you want to get a picture, uh, you remember seeing Terminator 2, right? So in that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger comes in, he wants a dress. So he scans people as to whose dress will fit him. And it system keeps on showing the outline. So. I can do exactly that on this. But uh, the algorithms, the image recognition, image processing that's required for that is still under research. So probably I may not have it in the next six months, but eventually somebody will have it. Me or somebody else, I don't know. What is the function of the light on your uh, spectacles? Sorry? Is it, what is the function of the light? Is it just for show or? This one? The light on the center. Uh, this one. Uh, basically, it's from the webcam. It says that it's recording. <laughs> Nothing else. So this is a Logitech webcam that I bought, which has a mic uh, and a 720p video recording capability. So 
the LED came along with it. Free offer. So actually I'm running uh, just a video, simple video streamer on the display here. I was thinking I can get it on VNC before I come on stage, but some of things didn't work out. But if you guys want to have a look properly, I can show it to you guys once I'm out. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Vinay. In fact, you remind us of Terminator. Just uh, instead of green light, there should be red light, you know. <laughs> and uh, I don't know about the stress on the eyes, whoever asked that question. I tried Google Glass for like an hour. And like uh, I. Uh, on my right eye, left eye, I guess, I was feeling the pain, so at least for me, it's not a very good thing. Uh, also, I don't know, using these technologies, you know, what you will do is probably, you know, eliminate these sort of conferences. You can sit at your home <laughs> and, you know, get everything done. <laughs> what happened to you, do yes, actually, that's the case. Uh, so that's all we have for TechLash. Uh, you guys can... Uh, talk to whoever was the speaker if you had any more questions and uh, let's have the regular sessions now another five minutes okay uh, thank you so much uh, and please be here for the feedback session at 5